Hello. Angel. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you, Marita? Oh, what are we? Good. I'm good. What are we talking about today? Today we are going to talk about community. Mm, that's a good topic. I know we both have a lot to say, so why don't you start? Yeah, community. You know, one of the things that um, I was reflecting upon is many of us that are doing those mission of service to the land, to people that are trying to weave the ancient ways in our lives in this modern world are confronted with this disconnect because most of those practices, rituals, services were always in a context of strong communities for thousands of years and until recently in many ways, still alive in many communities that way. But when we live in the Western world, uh, communities often not present in the same way. We cannot rely as much. We don't really, you know, grow food for 20 people and share the garden, weeding and taking care. We don't chop the woods and take care of the wood to warm the house of the village. Uh, so we kind of end up being the one doing everything um, and it can be a lot yeah and very often because the view of community in the western way is very different than the ancient ways just by mm -hmm. the language the the fact that often there's not really an i it's always a we so there's a very different way to look at it um my experience has also been that even people that call for community or want community come to be engaging community service sometime, uh, don't always um, create this sacred reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, like giving one example, if we say, okay, we're going to have a, a weekend of doing a specific thing for the land, we will have way less people interested that if we say, hey, we are going to do a thing for the land the whole weekend and we are going to offer you a healing session. We are mm -hmm. going to offer you uh, a teaching or something like that, right? So it's hard to have people really engage because also people are very remote and they might just come for a weekend and then go away. They are not always local. So there are a lot of layers that mm. makes the community creation, unless we live in a community village, there are a lot of communities popping up around the United States and other countries. Uh, it's difficult to really organize community, to reflect upon community. How do we create from, from community to if community is temporary for a weekend or for a long week and then it's gone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is not that long-term vision. Okay, we have this community and now what do we do? So I don't have a solution for this. <laughs> I wish mm -hmm. I had. Uh, but that's the complexity of to anyone that's in that work. Uh, I know you face it. And I know many people that are taking care of the land or in deep walk of service very often. It's one of the pain that is present. Yeah. We, the Western world is very transactional. You know, it's about, you know, what can I get out of this? What is the time and, and immediacy? You know, as someone who has existed in, and, and, and within a day, within a couple hours, can jump in between different cir circles of very Western circles, very indigenous circles, you know, kind of like makes my head spin once in a while. Um, you know, there's very different ways of community you know i was talking to a um one of my students who is went back to the reservation you know and they said i forgot how how easy it is when you're in community when you you're never doing anything alone you know when someone said you know uncle said hey by the way you know i need help with my garden you know six people show up the next day and do it you know there's just this understanding 
that it's not about you, right? That it's everyone is participating because that means in the families coming together, communities come together, you're eating, you're cooking. It's not just a thing, right? You know, you're not just coming and gardening. It's a, it becomes a whole thing. Mm -hmm. But then that's how you educate, right? That's how you educate. And that's another thing that people forget is they forget that it's the tending to the everyday things and the tending to land where the greatest teachings happen. That's always how indigenous people have taught. Sure, we sit in circle to a certain degree, but the real quote unquote, as people like to call integration into the body is when you're out there doing, because we come from very practical ways. A lot of our teachings are very built on practicable ways. And everything that we teach is our, we teach survival skills, whether it's the survival in a relationship with nature or with humans. That's everything we're teaching is community. And so I wanted to share that kind of imagery so that people understand the vast divide between Western ways and indigenous ways. And I'll give another example. And I think this will be interesting, you know, because you and I, you know, we sit, we talk about, you know, what are we going to be offering? What's going on? You know, there's a circle that I sit in um, where I'm very young, you know, uh, uh, young in the sense of being in that circle, uh, even though I'm an el a, a recognized elder. Most of the people have been there 30 years, 40 years and plus. And so I, I'm in a lot of communities like that, you know, and to request for, a, as you said, a healing or something to be taught, there's a lot of formality that has to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you want, you know, you want big healing takes a lot of work. So it makes you think, do you really, do I really want this ceremony? Right. There's some ceremonies that you have to request, uh, uh, three to four times throughout the year. And part of that is to make sure that the community still wants this. And you always have to gift, you always have to present. And part of, uh, the asks of many of the elders is to tend to the land where they want the healing to happen. And that's what people forget is the land is offering the healing. We are just ambassadors to the land because we we work with it more. We're there more. We're, we have our hands in it. So we are ambassadors. The real healing comes from the land. And so, you know, there'll be, uh, you know, week-long work parties to come to tend to land to earn it. Right. And part of the protocol is to request of the land. Can we be there? Do we have permission? Will it hold us in this circle or this ceremony that we're asking? So it's very different. Indigenous ways, you have to ask. You have to ask for help. You have to ask, hey, I need this. I need this teaching. What, what is the exchange? And we always know that part of that exchange is tending to the nature around us because that is what sustains us. Mm, yeah, I can definitely feel that, you know, one of the aspects of community also that we forget or that we don't always perceive immediately is that from a traditional perspective, the idea of community is within a group that has a, a set of values, a set of laws, a set of protocols, a set of rituals. Uh, it's extremely organized within the same mindset in many ways, heart set, soul set, right? There is a, a culture of community, okay. of that mm -hmm. community is within a certain culture. And as we are uh, in the Western world and coming with Western mind, we bring that culture in. And very often we lack the capacity to understand that it's not just forming a group of people doing one activity together. It's about reflecting on our visions, on our purpose, on our values, because we can only really belong together if there are those discussions, if there is this uh, harmony in some sense. Not that everybody has to be the same, but there is there are a set of rules that are unbreakable. There's things you can't really do in native communities and you need to understand that. And very often people see community, at least from the Western mind or where we come into community, coming around a practice or coming around an activity, right? Mm -hmm. It's geared towards what we're going to do. Let's say we are going to 
chop woods for the sweat lodge mm -hmm. or we are going to tend the garden but there are not uh the important layers of values there are not the important layers of rituals always so it's difficult then for the glue of community to really happen without that and especially yeah. if we are many people don't live on the land or don't have access to land even uh, if you have lost that connection for a long time we might not even understand what is really bringing us together what it is asking of us uh, and also it's temporary community it used to be you were born into the community and you will die into that community so it was your life it was not an activity it was not something you know that is fun to do or that is enjoyable it's also something that come with sacrifice with difficulty with struggles and communities had or still have for some the way to also manage that and to do that and because we're in a culture of entertainment of distraction yeah. of pleasure let's say of constant you know high on the next fun thing yeah. to do for a very short amount of time this hook that we have mm -hmm. uh we have very hard time to integrate the other aspect of community to even see how important they are which yeah. require things that are not pleasant that are difficult where maybe in that moment in that weekend of helping or that day of doing community things you didn't get anything directly for you even in fact you're probably always getting something from the connection from the land and from all of that but it's kind of this difficulty to get out of the high of the self the self that wants to have something out of it because that's how we've been trained right you sign up for school you're going to get something you pay for a product you're getting the product you pay for a service and here it's not transactional in the same way mm -hmm. and also it's not always transactional with joy and pleasure sometimes yep. it's with pain sometimes it's with difficult conversation sometimes it's very often it's with unresolved problems that that's just the place we're in in the world right now and we don't have solution but we're coming together to witness each other in this moment so it's not yeah. always problem solving oriented like our world is it's more <laughs> state of where we are and this capacity to be together and in, in that struggle and i think that's often missing people idealize community I have a few friends that lives in modern communities uh, in Oregon that have recreated a whole village and everything is shared and there's a lot of rules and regulations and laws and the way you participate and when there is children, when there is food, when there is building to repair, et cetera, et cetera. And there are a lot of protocols around conflict resolution, around disagreements around balance uh, yeah. of time you know because if you're a new uh mother yeah your place in the community is going to be different than a single man in terms of your availability yeah. because you raising the child is a gift to the community it's not just her raising your child it's this child is going to participate right so that's a layer that i think is also really important to to remember and to explore yeah, I'll add two things for that to that and and be brief. One of them is I think you, you keep saying it, but I, I'm just gonna say it out is being in community is not an avoidance of conflict. Right. And a lot of people think that spiritual communities are supposed to be, we're not supposed to be human in them. And humans, if you if a human to human relationship exists, there will be conflict at one point, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why there's a lot of protocols, you know, a lot of the watered down protocol of Ho'oponopono, which really takes years and years to study. And when you were, is for conflict resolution. And it takes weeks to do Ho'oponopono correctly. It can take weeks, right? Because you're sitting and everyone gets to talk and every, you know, it's just, it's very different than what has been watered down. And so we forget that, <laughs> You know, there's this weird thing that, we, oh, okay, now I'm in a spiritual community. There's going to be no conflict. Yeah, you're with humans. And then I'll add to that, 
again, in indigenous circles, we recognize that our community is, we're not human centric. And I say that a lot to people, but I don't think they get it until they have conversa- really conversations with me when they think that I will prioritize a human relationship over that of land or that of an animal. I don't, I don't, right? They're equal to me to a certain degree. And I probably skew more towards land and animal than humans because, um, because that's how I've learned. That's <laughs> where it's that's needed how, right now, right? We've done the work. That's what translate. it's needed right now, right? That's what it's re- needed right now. And so, um, you know, I think people don't understand that till till you're really faced with, you know, people who will be like, okay, that's great. You know, you want to leave? Sounds great. You know, I'm going to go take care of this. And they, they miss the drama, you know. Um, we always do everything out of free will, you know, completely free will. And people have a problem with free will. They, they, but that's a whole nother conversation that we'll talk into it. But I think this is an opportunity, right? As we continue to build this community uh, online, as well as in our circles and on land to, to, to pause and to reflect and to come with an empty cup, you know, and not just expect it to be filled by someone else, but also even that cup that you created has value. So your vessel has value, right? Mm -hmm. If you come and you work on land, you can fill it up with work. Yeah, Yeah. I'll finish by just saying, yeah, think about it when you want to create community or want to participate in community or want to call community, right? That you're not just bringing your your vision, your passion, your love, you know, all the good stuff, right? But that you're also bringing your sweat and your tears and your pain and your struggle and community that are really strong that I know of. It's when all of that is presented in the community. All of that is acknowledged. In fact, you can't integrate a community without sharing all of that because they want to know yeah, not just that you want to help that, but what's really going on because we're also energetically in community, spiritually in community, not just physically, right? So that's the good things to, to reflect upon. That's the practical wisdom of blood, sweat, tears, and prayer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Marita. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.